Uh, next, we have um, Celeste Slayer, who's, uh, who will be moderating this next panel on building branded digital twin experiences. Um, this is a hot topic in our industry, uh, digital twins. And, um, you know, largely because it's something that we can relate to our, you know, in real life experiences and replicate in the virtual world. So I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from all you guys. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Christy. So good to see you guys. And um, I'll let you guys take it from here. Um, looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Let's start with introductions with you, Gabe, and then you, Christy. Let me start. Um, thank you. So nice to be here with everyone and welcome to the Digital Twin panel for this WebXR Brand Summit series. And we are here to wrap our heads a little bit more around this exciting topic. And I thought maybe to start, we could lean in um, and define the digital twin for anyone that's maybe new here. So a digital twin is considered a virtual 3D representation of a physical object or a system. Um, that is uh, displayed, accessible, and now considered an essential building block of the digital world of the metaverse. Um, so digital twins are enabling us to take our physical world and recreate it in the digital realm, um, oftentimes down to a microscopic detail with real-time data that can be displayed. Um, interestingly, NASA and the U.S. Department of Defense, uh, DARPA, are generally credited with coining and popularizing the term digital twin and the concept itself as a way of more safely, quickly, and efficiently testing aircraft and spacecraft during their development. And now savvy and competitive companies are building virtual headquarters, factories, retail stores, products, um, concert and festival spaces, which is kind of like my um, forte. And they're beginning to invest in digital twins of their entities in anticipation of the metaverse gaining traction in the business world. Um, so these twins can be used from anything from hybrid workspaces for meetings, hotels, nightclub experiences, um, again, with real-time data to identify missteps in a production process of something like a manufacturing plant or factory. And some of us, including certain members in this panel, use digital twins as revolutionary, revolutionary new ways of partying together as avatars inside virtual reality. Uh, which is surprisingly fun. Uh, we enjoy music and art on the social side of this tech. And um, this is also where cool new branding opportunities are coming into play. Uh, the digital twin market is estimated to grow at an annual rate of around 40% uh, to nearly 25 billion by around 2026. Um, so experts are putting high hopes and expectations into the concept of twins to help us uh, cut costs, become more efficient, reliable, secure. And also this is very important, environmentally sustainable. And this is something that I, I know that um, Christy and I are really, really passionate about um, by creating these insights about how to improve operations, increase efficiency or discover issues uh, all possible before it happens to whatever it's duplicating in the real world. Um, these lessons learned from digital twins can be applied to original systems with which must let less risk and return of investment. So um, I won't ramble on too much more, but my name is Celeste Lear and I'm an immersive experience designer and event producer. Um, I work in the entertainment, tech, arts, and media uh, music world. Um, I work with Dreamland XR, and my company is called Boutique Electronic Music. I'm proud to have taken part in some very revolutionary, fun, um, I think, cutting edge di digital twin related projects in the AR, VR, XR world, uh, some of which we're going to talk about today. And um, without further ado, I want to introduce uh, our first panelist is Gabe. Baker and Gabe is the product manager for Frame, which is a web XR based VR creation and collaboration tool. And he's worked at the intersection of immersive technology and collaboration for 10 years. So Gabe, uh, welcome. Welcome, hey, welcome. It's, it's, it's great to be here. Hey, it's so nice to have you. So what should our community know about Frame and how does it relate to our topic of digital twins today? Well, um, as you said, Frame is a it's a browser based kind of WebXR collaboration and creation tool. Um, fundamentally, we just make it easy for people to come together and have meetings and do different kinds of things inside of immersive spaces. A lot of our users, they like having these meetings or uh, online interactions inside of spaces that remind them of home and home okay. for many of these companies is 
an actual like physical office that they want to have recreated to some extent uh, inside of this new digital world. So we find ourselves sometimes creating these digital twins for clients. We also just sometimes prefer to let them do it themselves. So we let them upload their own models. We sometimes wow, just don't okay. have bandwidth to deal with uh, all the people that actually want these digital twins. So um, we also just let you upload your own models. So that's kind of how we fit in. We're kind of a place where a company can take their digital twin and then very quickly upload it into a browser-based environment and hold their meetings inside of it. Fascinating. Okay, how long has Frame been around? Frame's been around for uh, about two and a half years now. Um, okay, I'm just curious, who are some of your clients? Um, who comes to you typically? Well, um, we have a, specifically in the digital twin, like realm, um, some recent uh, big names who we've done this for. We did a digital twin of uh, Trello's office in uh, New York City. They had an wow. employee offsite inside of their Trello uh, office. Um, we did a digital twin of a building on University of Massachusetts. They hold online classes inside of a digital twin of one of their wow. like iconic uh, buildings at uh, UMass Boston. Um, and then uh, a number of others. Later this year, you'll see uh, some very big names uh, come through our pipeline in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and some others. Uh, but then we also, we don't just, we're not just limited to like these really big name, like kind of splashy companies, even just our hope is that even small companies uh, use Frame and many of them do. And many of them, they're not some big splashy name, but uh, we don't think that you need to be some huge budget company to be able to do this. Uh, so we really like the idea of smaller companies being able to somehow piece together a digital twin even if it's not some super, you know, triple A game quality thing and, and use frame for that purpose too. So we have close to a hundred thousand users now and uh, only a handful Great. of them are those like super big name uh, splashy clients. Okay, congratulations on that. And, and I'm actually curious when you're talking about this, is this a program or platform that can be used um, on a computer and in a headset? Is it fully immersive and accessible via virtual reality? Yep. The beauty of the WebXR API, and shout out to anyone uh, out there who's uh, interested in WebXR, but WebXR is awesome because it's a browser API that lets the browser communicate to uh, immersive hardware. So this is why on the Oculus Quest, you can open up the browser, navigate to a frame URL, and enter it in full immersive mode. Alternatively, you can just open it up on a web browser on your mobile uh, or laptop or Chromebook or desktop. And Is it Mac and PC? Oh yeah, Mac and PC. It's not a native application, so it's not a download situation. You can open up Chrome, Safari, Edge, and just have at it. Wow, impressive! Wow, that's so fascinating to hear about. Um, let's see. I want to also move around a little bit. So, um, our next contestant is the lovely Miss Christy Fennis, and I want to introduce her. So, Christy Fennis is, in, is an immersive storyteller, a three D modeler, virtual world builder. Um, she's working as one half of the dynamic duo known as Cause and Christy, who we we love and have worked with in the past. And they're super, super creative and super fun to work with. Um, she specializes in immer immersive XR design, in addition to her role as an XR simulation developer at UNC. Uh, Christy received her dual master's and bachelor's degrees from UNC Chapel Hills of Hussman School of Media and Journalism and Environmental Science Program, where she focuses on on strategic communication, ethical PR, GIS, and emerging technologies like immersive media development. So Christy, um, tell us a little bit more about what you're working on right now. What are you excited about? Yeah, um, so I've been on a lot of things, um, but most recently, um, I feel like I was pretty excited to work on the Act Now VR Worlds. We did the wins, um, which I think you were going to talk about later. So I won't, I won't talk too much about it at the moment. But we did the digital twin experiences of the Awasal Dome um, in Dubai and Uluru uh, in Australia. Um, I currently, I'm working on a few different simulations, um, and uh, a lot of them are in the development side of it right now. I'm excited to soon be hopping back into 3D modeling. <laughs> um, and yeah, excited to be here to talk about digital twins. Um, 
you mentioned the GIS background, which uh, is a fun uh, add-on to building digital twins when you can incorporate the GIS data of the terrain. Actually, I'm not so familiar with GIS. Could you delve into that a little bit more? Um, oh, ge geospatial information systems. So, so essentially, um, back in the day, I, I learned in ARC GIS. That uh, was a desktop application. Um, and then we moved to some GIS uh, cloud-based services as well. Um, but yeah, it's essentially geographic data. Um, you can use it to get really neat data insights uh, for many purposes, uh, one of which could be like an environmental perspective. You see all these cases of a sickness popping up, and then you see it's all along this river, and you see that there's a, a, a factory up here that <laughs> you, can, you can kind of like tie the, the spatial-based um, variables together. Uh, but it also can be used in creating 3D uh, digital twins. So, for instance, we use GIS data to create Uluru, um, the beautiful oh. big rock. Yeah, the, na the National Park there in Australia. So that Formerly was a, known as Ayers Rock for yep. anyone here. And this was a project we worked on for UNESCO and the United Nations for the ACT Now VR campaign. Yep. Um, yeah, that's so exciting. So that real-time data and how it can play into the digital twin and is, we're seeing this come into play more and more. Uh, it's so fascinating. Um, I'm also seeing your background. Is this a world you built yourself? Oh, uh, um, that's yes. freezing a lot, but I'm just talking. <laughs> I, we can <laughs> um, we hear have two you. Different on, on right now. <laughs> but yeah, the background, um, this is the, the back of an Apple Comics space. Um, we actually they cause an uh, working with Doug and Athena and Pigrock Creative uh, to build a little twin of Golden Apple, and Co Gold Golden Apple Comics, um, which is a real comic book shop out in California. <laughs> Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that experience, maybe the, the people here, and also how this ties into branding. Maybe you can tie that together a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it was a really, really fun experience. Um, we, Cos and I, had never physically been to Golden Apple Comics, uh, but uh, Doug had and Athena had, and uh, we used a series of photos, like really uh, detail-oriented photos as well as 360 photos to get um, a feel of what the inside of the comic book shop looked like. Um, we also used the Google uh, Street View for outside the comic book shop and essentially recreated uh, the inside as well as right there at their very beginning of the, right in front of their store, uh, the street front. And uh, uh, it included like so many comic books. Oh my gosh, my texture atlases were ginormous. Um, <laughs> but they were all, each comic in the store was unique. And it was a comic book that they, Golden Apple Comics had for sale on their website. Um, so it was actually comics that they had as well as um, two different series that they, they were the creators of um, two different comic series as well. And um, many of the comic books you could pick up um, some of them actually opened up, so you got a little preview yeah. of like one one of the the layouts. Um, and yeah, then the space was um, used for WonderCon, and I know Doug can speak more to the, the events that were held in the space um, after after we got it built. Yeah, actually, on that topic, let us not forget our our um, other contestant, which is Doug Jacobson, one of my it's like the dating game. <laughs> <laughs> And Doug is the co-founder of Big Rock Creative. It's an XR company producing large-scale events in, in VR, like some very groundbreaking events. So Big Rock's first project was VRC VR. It was created a fully immersive Burning Man festival experience in social VR starting in 2020, which generated a lot of positive PR, including an article in Wired magazine, well-deserved because they put so much work and passion into that. Uh, so Big Rock Creative did win the Producers Guild Innovation Award and an REA Award, and has since worked on projects ranging from directing an XR music video featuring Pitbull, uh, 
facilitating a Hollywood red carpet premiere in VR and credited, credited to the VR creation of Brianna's Garden. So, Doug, it's, it's, I'm always such a big fan of your work. So tell oh. us also a little bit about what you're working on right now. Well, actually, uh, we just dragged Christy out to Burning Man. Um, we just got back a week ago, and she doesn't look very dusty anymore. <laughs> You've got to um, do it at least once. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was challenging as hell. <laughs> but I'm not sure Cause has. Um, he, he doesn't like to shower. That's a whole other topic. Okay, we're we'll off. For that. anyone coming, uh, we're all time friends. Here. Okay, so anyway, um, you know, it's it's. Into, I'm glad you brought up the the Golden Apple comic book store because it to me it, it occurs that there's there's sort of three kinds of digital twins that sort of occurred to me. Um, one, when we did uh, Burning Man in 2020, we were doing a digital twin of Burning Man, but we were doing a city that didn't exist because it wasn't happening that year. So it was sort of a mythological digital twin. And I think, I think this is where uh, brands could really shine. They don't need to do a digital twin of their building. They could do this sort of best version in the sky version that. of the digital okay. twin. Because people get obsessed... I think when a new technology comes out, and if you remember the iPhone, um, we were really leaning into skeuomorphism, whereas like the address book app looked like an, a leather-bound address book, and there was a debate for many years, like, can we now jettison the actual reference that the address book has and make it just fully digital? And so Burning Man was sort of a fantasy digital twin. And then we also did a building from Microsoft during COVID, an actual digital twin, Mm. The building couldn't open before COVID, so they did a opening in VR. And so we actually modeled out two or three floors of this Microsoft building, and the people got to walk around and see their desk and stuff, which is kind of bizarre. <laughs> um, and that was like trying to get it as accurate as possible. And then, uh, and also the Golden Apple Comics, which Cos and Christy were done, trying to get it as, as accurate as possible. And then this other kind, we just did this um, Pride World. Um, do, am I having static right now? Oh, it's, it's static problems. So how is my audio right now? Can How's my audio now? Hold on. Is it better? There's a little static, so I think we're going to take it back. Test one, um, two, three. Any difference? Is it, that's better yeah, it's to me. Yeah, coming from your mic, but yeah, it's better now. How sad. <sighs> anyway, I'll try to be quick. Uh, that's better. It's better now. Third time, the third kind was um, we did this uh, Microsoft Pride World, and we recreated Stonewall as a digital twin as it was in 1969. And there's something really powerful about creating a time in history and going back and recreating that moment in time as it was. And I don't think brands, you know, need to get so stuck on this is our building. Um, I think they need to create the mythical best version of their brand that maybe doesn't need to have physics as much. So it'll eventually morph out of, because they're not doing airline testing and car testing. They're, you know, it's just a place to go. So when you go to Pop-Tart World, you don't want to go <laughs> to the lobby of the corporate headquarters. You want to go to Pop-Tart World. So I don't know how much digital twinning you really needs to happen as slavishly. I hope you have the Pop Tart account. That would be a really fun one to work on in the metaverse. Yeah, I just made it up. So we, uh, if anyone wants to team up and make Pop Tart World, let me know. Yeah. Um, so actually, since since uh, Christy and Doug and and I also worked on the Act Now VR campaign, this is a really good, solid example of a, a digital twin. And and I thought maybe um, now we could open up the conversation to everyone here. I want to play in the background. We can talk about. Um, Act Now VR, those of you that worked on it, and then maybe bring the conversation into how, since this is all about branding, um, how uh, anyone watching here can learn more about how they can integrate uh, their business uh, and commerce. In, and I'm gonna share a screen. This was a non-commercial project, but it shows a good example of um, a digital twin. So take a look here. Non-commercial, but still very much, you know, thinking about PR and running a campaign, but for, you know. Yeah, this is very relevant to brands, for sure. So, um, 
maybe everyone can chime in on how can people that are in marketing and brands get involved a little bit more in this world? Well, I don't, I'm scared now. I'm, now I'm paranoid. I'm fuzzing out. So uh, you guys will tell me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I think that what brands are exploring is how can we get into this space. And the first thought for a brand is, well, let's let's. The, my imagination gives me to a physical space that I want to recreate. Hence the digital twinness of it. So right now, a lot of brands are asking, you know, what could our presence be in this space? Um, so I, I I think that. I think that the, that's, it's a good starting place because it's where their imagination goes. Like, I want to be in VR, let's do our lobby. You know, and it's sort of a starting place. I think we'll evolve out of that over time. But, but I think it's a good Hey, Doug, place. do you have an alternate mic? Uh, if you could maybe go to your settings and switch to a different mic. Um, uh, and anyone else wants to chime in, maybe we can talk a little bit about the art behind the world building and as Doug was touching on a little, a little bit um, about how to make the digital twin experience bigger and better and more creative than even the real world experience. Can Gabe wants to touch in on that maybe? Oh, I'm, I'm definitely overall aligned with Doug's uh, sensibilities there. I, I think that it's almost like this technical challenge sometimes that brand C of like, let's try to recreate the inch to inch digital twin of a building. And, and often when you ask them like, hey, well, do you really want that wall there? They say, well, no, like if we could, if we could rebuild this building from scratch, the wall wouldn't be there. And then you say, well, why do you want it in this digital version? It becomes this strange conversation and they, they kind of forget what the goals are. I mean, is the goal just to have some digital twin that looks just like the space or is the goal to kind of do something different? Um, one thing we have noticed is that for particularly older buildings, uh, there are sometimes some like things of just real deep company cultural significance that have accrued in the building that are like very, uh, they just resonate really deeply with the company for whatever reason. It's just maybe it just has been there forever. It's some like tradition, like everyone knows about it. Uh, so we have seen that like it often is important that some pieces are just nailed. Uh, but that, d that doesn't necessarily mean the entire building needs to be nailed. It's just these kind of core elements. Um, we've also seen some uh, really large companies who have offices all over the world. They're trying to make, this is definitely along Doug, this like mythological vein. They're trying to make like a digital twin that in some ways brings together the most iconic elements of 10 different offices into one space. Uh, uh -huh. So that anyone from around the world, when they visit this digital twin of this office, they might see some piece of this actual office in uh, some country and others might notice a bit from another. So, you know, I do think we do, we, 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 they absolutely should think outside the box a little bit when it comes to what a digital twin is and what it can be. Um, and just on the physics line, yeah, we, we have capabilities in the metaverse that you don't uh, necessarily have in the real world. <laughs> we don't need to be thinking about like, oh, the, here's a stairwell up to this other floor. You know, maybe you make a fun little portal that just teleports <laughs> or somewhere. Um, so yeah, but getting them to think that way can be a challenge. But I think once they see some really good examples of what other brands have done that uh, are really creative and kind of spectacular and a little bit mind bending, that can be a good, uh, just like provocative moment for them. Yeah, I would say for Pop Tart, Tart World, World. Uh, <laughs> instead of stairs, you would just get on top of the Pop Tart coming out of the poster and shoot up to the next level. Yeah, you can do creative things that incorporate your brand. And I'm sure Coca Cola, I'm sure Coca Cola, Lava uh, Hat, the Coke Bottle, and the Coke Museum, the Coke Museum, and 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 the Coke
I mean, aside from the obvious having events, you know, our social events in the metaverse and being able to come together without necessarily needing to board a plane across the country, um, which we still will do that, but we don't have to do as frequently. (laughs) Um, Even beyond that, digital twins are useful in, say, you have a a city block um, and the city wants to rebuild it but also redesign itself to be uh, to offer more public spaces and to be um, potentially going towards smart city development. Um, hmm. Creating a digital twin allows you to iterate upon the existing design designs and alter and see what would actually work. Um, you could even simulate, you know, like what would the walking paths be and what would the the traffic be through this area. Um, hmm. So it's certainly useful for city in planning. Kind of future visions as well yeah yeah for city planning and envisioning the future that we want it's so fascinating now i read somewhere that the city of singapore is actually currently undergoing or is going to be designed as a exact digital twin it will be one of the first major cities where i believe they they'll have um, an experience and also like real-time data based on what you were talking, the technology that you were talking about earlier today, the GIS and some yes. real-time data insertions. Gabe, are you using anything like that in, in your platform right now? Uh, no, but we'd like to be. Um, I think that kind of data is really cool. The closest we come to that is we have there's a service called Mapbox that actually lets you pipe in just like geospatial data. So mm-hmm. in frame, you can put in a location and search for Jackson, Wyoming. And then all of a sudden you'll see uh, like Jackson, Wyoming below you uh, with 3D terrain. Like it pulls in the height maps and everything like that. It's a pretty cool like digital twin of reality kind of in this wow. sort of strange way. And then you can kind of walk around it. Um, and you can turn on fly mode and like actually fly around the mountains, which is let's total- admit we all yeah. really like that. If you're in VR, that's one of the perks. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I still think Google Earth is like one of the pieces of technology that I still look like I, I open up every day and just like astonished at how mm. incredible it is. And I feel like we still don't have that yet, really, in like the metaverse equivalent of the Google Earth. Uh, I think there's an app now that is starting to like do this, which is really cool. I just have yet to check it out. Google mm, Earth wow. is my favorite demo to put people in for their first time. Because again, it's like immediately relatable to what they know. So I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for a, an awesome panel. As usual, thank you, Celeste, for leading the charge. You guys are awesome. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the metaverse soon. Robot Doug says bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Cheers. <laughs>